Hey everyone and welcome back to Don 10. We've got the mirror match and we lost the die roll this time. Uh, we got stuck going first and our hand's actually not bad for going first. We've got uh, baby five and then three five drops and a dofi, so I'm feeling okay. He does drop the brand new on one. We don't play brand new on our list. I don't like it in Perona. I don't even like it in Gecko, honestly. But people are stuck on it. He trashes some stuff, picks up a card, and we pick up an 8 cost Gecko here. So I'm like, oh, great. We've got an amazing late game. And I've got two Sabos to back it up. As long as he doesn't see Brook in a minus effect from lead, we're gravy. So we go seven into the brand new. And then get a baby five search, maybe pick up a Razanante blocker or the zero cost event, maybe. Even another uh, Virgo would be sick. Or Virgo. Well, we pick up the two cost and we show it nice to our opponent there. Um, by the way, uh, my opponent this time is, his name's Casey. He's actually an employee of one of the locations, or a few of the locations of where we're playing today. So. Or I should say where this tournament took place at. Because by the time you see this video, the tournament's already happened. <laughs> but he also has been playing Perona longer than me. But obviously, our, our deck lists vary a little bit. He's playing the brand new lines. I'm not. I'm at three Brook because I think that card's cracked. And here we can just drop a Sabo real, realistically. We can just go five into life and then drop a Sabo. Sounds good. If I do anything else, it'll be dumb. Because he can, he can do the Kuzan thing and minus the Sabo. And he'll be able to like get rid of it with the Brook, but with no other ability. So that's what's really cool here. And I trash a zero cost and a Ryuma, which is exactly what I want to be doing. I... It, the only other card I would like to get in the trash here is a two-cost Rosinante blocker, so that my eight-cost Gecko has full value. Like I can buy the ba buy back the baby five unrested if I want, and put the Ryuma rested. But if, without a Rosinante blocker in play at that point, it doesn't seem great. So I'm really hoping to find that blocker soon. And he plays a great eruption on the Sabo, and I'm like, oh great, our Sabo ain't gonna make it. Then he rests the Sabo. And he's got five Don left. So I'm wondering if he's going to drop a Sabo himself. Or if he's going to play out a Borsalino or something. He goes six into life. And I have I have the Virgo. But I'm like, you know what? Let's just take the first life. And we found that Rosinante. So thank God. And then drops a Borsalino and passes. Instead of swinging into the Sabo here which is interesting because now I can just play another Sabo if I want to or I can deal with the Kuzan now that I've drawn the X Drake but I also had the Brook in hand and we're on the even curve so I have like an extra Don to play with with on top of all of my effects that's like the only bonus about going first is like at this point in the game I have an extra Don on top of what I need to be doing which is super cool, because like worst case scenario, I attack for six with lead instead of five. Whereas if you are on the e on the even curve, you do get to do your top end first if you have it, but you only get to swing five with lead that turn. And I'm thinking like I need to get rid of this Kuzan because it's going to be very problematic. So we go six into the Borsalino, see if we can get a counter out of his hand. And he's more than likely going to pitch something that can be good for the Gecko Moria plays, which is the Suru. He goes two out of it, which is interesting. I think he only needed a 1k there, which is telling that he might not have many 1ks. And then we go six into the Borsalino, which I don't know if I should have did that, but I think because we did it, it was okay. But it just like gives him a target for Gecko later, but at least it won't be like a Ryuma combo. You know, if he does choose to take the Borsalino. And we do get rid of the Kuzan as well with the Brook. And then pass it on over. And now our opponent is on 8 Don turn. So they can play Gecko here. Which is more than likely going to happen. Yep. He goes 5 here. 
So we know Gecko's coming, and we pitch the Razanante because we have a Gecko to follow up with on our 9 Don turn. Where we can play Ryuma and Razanante. KO something that he brings back. Because if he doesn't bring back Borsellino here, we can just KO something. Now, if we top deck an Ice Age, we can get rid of the Gecko Moria. But we can just get rid of the brand new that's rested with um, our Ryuma and then have the Razanante unrested. There's that world. There's a lot of different weird combos you can play in the mirror here. My, my idea is now I need to respond with Gecko because he played a Gecko and I need my Gecko to be more valuable. And we draw a Great Eruption and there's like, well I'm on 9 Don turn so like I can save this Don and put it on my leader to get two six, two six cost swings. Potentially swing with the Sabo even because we know it may not stay. So I'm like, do I play the Great Eruption or not just to cycle it out? Because it is just a card that isn't going to do much in this match. Because the blockers I want to KO, I can't. And I can already rest the Borsellino if I need to. So I think we are going to play the Great Eruption just to cycle it. And we minus the Gecko because we know it won't matter. And there's no way I can get him down far enough. And I go five into the Branu, and he lets it go. Interesting. Thought maybe it would have baited out the block with this, the Borsellino. But this is like telling of his hand, in my opinion. Because he knew I could just rest it anyway, so why not take the free block? And now I can send six into the Borsellino and see what he does. Sends a 1k. Play out our own Gecko Moria. Ryuma. And Rested Razanante. No, no effect on the Ryuma and pass. Fortunately, you can't KO the Borsellino with the Ryuma. Wish you could. But that's why we got the Brooks. But we needed to respond with a Gecko there no matter what happened. Because he had played a gecko and I, I'm not on 10 Don turn to respond with a Delphi. And I didn't have Ice Age to rest down the gecko. So now he's probably going to go for a KO on this Sabo. But we have another one in hand. So I'm less sketched about it. Sends 5 into the Razanante, which is a little sad. Now I can't save my rested characters. Like, I, I can, but I have to use cards out of hand. And our opponent is still at 4 life. So we've been trying to control the board so that we can back him into a position where he has no more resources. And then take all of his life. Over the course of, like, 2 turns. That's, like, the idea. I want to get to this 10 cost Dofi and then start going for life. After I've gotten rid of his boss monsters. Or, like, made his boss monsters irrelevant. But this is the mirror. He could pull out just the same shenanigans that I pull out. <laughs> I was just glad to not see a Dofi on this turn. And so we counter out of this attack. I'm not sure if that was coming at life or coming at one of my characters. He went 10, so I'm assuming we went. We had 11. So yeah, it, it was at one of the characters. And we save it because you know he's not. We know he's not going to swing into any more of those if he wants to play another Gecko. So now he can Gecko. Now he can blow up the Sabo this turn. He totally can if he has Ryuma, which I think this is what he's going for. Yep, Sabo's gone, and that's all he brings back, which is interesting. I would have brought back the brand new if I'm playing the brand new build. I would have just, at least for value, you know what I mean? So now we're on 10 Don turn. Um, we've got options unfortunately we don't have many options so i think we rest down the ryuma 
But I think I rest down the Borsalino. I, I should have rest down the Reunion, I guess. And then froze it, and then made him use the, the Borsalino as a blocker. Which would have been pretty good, but at least this guarantees the blocker's frozen next turn. And we just slam it down. We don't even try to hide it. And then we go, I believe, just... Nine into life. So, I mean, yeah, you start on five. Absolutely. See what he does. Start on five. He takes one life and then I pass it over. Oh, okay. Fair. And he's trying to figure out. Pretty sure I passed it over, right? Yeah, I passed it over. He was just figuring out what, what, what to do in his head. But, yep, the Borsalino's frozen. He does get his Don back. <laughs> so he is on 10 Don. And I think he's trying to figure out, like, crap, I don't have 10 Don. Where is it? It's under his gecko. But I was like, man, if he res if he can, like, rest down something and respond with Adolfi here, it's kind of sketchy. But me getting the gecko into Adolfi feels pretty good. So he rests down the, the Ryuma. Sorry about the glare again. It seems like that one little spot is pretty glare filled. <laughs> right on my play mat. <laughs> yeah, so he rests down the Ryuma and I'm like, man, that sucks. I have to like let this Ryuma go if he attacks it. Cause like, I'm not gonna save it out of hand, unfortunately. Especially if he goes the Gecko at it. If he goes the Ryuma at it, we could save it. But at, Oh, it's his turn. Duh, we get to get rid of the Borsalino. But there's a world he just plays another Gecko and brings it back. But if he does that... Then I need to play Sabo. Like, I have to. And we find another 10 cost Dofi. Holy smoke. So now my next turn, I can just play 10 cost Dofi and freeze Leader and the two Geckos. And then attack down this Ryuma with... Either one of the big lords, or I could just try to attack it with the Brook and see if he wants to counter out of hand. But he's probably getting rid of... Oh, he gets rid of the Ryuma. Okay, fair. And then brings the brand new back rested. So that he can mill some cards. Alright. Sounds good. And I believe he finds a 2k here, which is pretty rough. Oh, he does not. He finds the Razanate. And pitches two Ice Ages. Love to see it. Love to see it. Alright, so now we're in a pretty comfortable position here. We can just slam this 10 cost Dofi down. And we rest down the Borsalino. And I'm pretty sure we just send our big Dofi into the Borsal... There's a world we send it just into the Borsalino. That might be smart. Because we froze the three boss monsters. Or we froze uh, the two Geckos and the leader. Because I can attack down the Branu. And then I can use Dofi to attack down Borsalino. And then next turn, I'm pretty sure we're in the clear to go for game. And I send six into life because I don't care if he attacks down the brook. It's like a free attack. And now I am going to swing the gecko here, which... <coughs> let me be honest with you, that's risky as heck. Because he could respond with Dofi here and absolutely obliterate me for a turn. Now, I don't know if he wins on the crackback. Or if I win, like I don't know how. I would need another Dofi to respond with, actually, for me to get out of that. And if I don't have that, and I've already played two, which is pretty unlikely that I have another one. Like, that that's nuts. That's nuts. Like, I, I'm like, shoot. I, I started thinking about that as, as my turn, his turn's going on. I'm like, crap, if he just Dofis me here, I'm done. Like, that's it. It's over. 
But if he doesn't Dofi me here, there's a very good chance that we get to go for gang. Like, very good chance. Because we have enough counter in hand to counter out of whatever he swings into outside of the brook. And we don't care if he swings into life with Gecko here. Like, I'll just take it at this point. Because I do want to kind of save as many cards in my hand as possible to get out of character attacks where he's going into my board. So if any, like if he can't kill me and comes into life, I'm just going to take it and then protect the ever living crap out of my board as much as I can so that I have as many swings as possible to go for the two life he has. And we've kind of achieved this board state of draining his resources while being able to be a, um, slightly aggressive which has gotten us here. So he goes 14 into the Dofi. Or I meant 13 into the Dofi. And I believe we have 14 in hand. We have 15. In, excuse me. We have 15 uh, in hand. So like we can get up to 15 in hand. So we can just counter out with everything but the Borsalino. Which I think is incorrect. I think we counter out with everything but the Sabo. Because the Borsalino can be rested, also can be brought back with Gecko if we happen to have it next turn and we need to play it, which we won't need to. We can go for game at this point since he took this route. And he just puts out two blockers, which means he's got two life. I have five attacks if I rest down the Borsalino and just ignore the other blocker. He's got four cards in hand and two life, so we just go eight. A bunch of boss attacks and then a fat amount on lead and that should do the job because even if he gets out of this AK attack I don't think I should attach one to gecko here but we do that way it's like three tens which is fair we go 10 10 in the lead makes me discard a card and we discard the Anupe, and then we go 12 in the lead. That's the game, folks. Smash that join button. Smash that sub button. Leave a like. Leave a comment. We will see you next time.